Hey, what's going on my friends? Patrick here back today with another video and it's been a little while since I've done a what's in my bag video obviously. But as we start to make some strides towards a safe and healthy return to normal, I thought it would be cool to do a little what's in my bag update. Recently, I have been fortunate enough to start booking gigs again, collaborate, shoot content, and I've even done a little bit of traveling. So in this video, I am going to cover all of the music making and content creating essentials that I can't leave home without. Hopefully this will give you some ideas for your own setup, but let's get into it. First up, the bag. So the backpack that I have been rocking for the majority of this year is this Mono Flyby Ultra. Now I've already made a full review of this bag on my channel, so I'll be brief, but what I will say is that this bag was 100% designed with musicians and creators in mind. Mono themselves have coined the Flyby Ultra the ultimate creator experience. Now the Flyby Ultra has a ton of pockets and pouches and compartments that make it really easy to cart a ton of gear and keep everything organized. The main compartment here is super deep and opens nice and wide. And the bag even features a breakaway laptop bag should you only need to carry a few essentials. You get a lot of versatility and carrying options with the Flyby Ultra. And as we start to get into some of the contents of the bag, I'm gonna include some things that don't necessarily come with me every time I leave the house, but items that, depending on the gig, sometimes need to come with me and easily fit into the Flyby Ultra. Now, in the name of full disclosure, I did reach out to Mono and ask them to send me this bag. I have been a Mono Case customer for a number of years, and I really love and endorse their products. As much as I do feel like this is a top, top quality bag, I do understand that the $2.99 price tag is a little more than a lot of people are willing to spend, so I've got you covered. I made a video comparing the Flyby Ultra to the Mono Stealth Alias backpack, which is half the price of the Flyby Ultra. So I'll be sure to link that comparison up for those of you who are looking for a backpack, but let's move on to some music gear. Now, my portable music making setup is pretty straightforward. I am definitely the type to almost never leave home without the ability to capture a new song idea. And obviously the brains of the operation is of course the laptop. 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro is my main machine. Pretty standard stuff. Logic Pro is my DAW of choice, but yeah, can't ever leave home without my MacBook Pro. So no surprise here if you're a friend of the channel, but a MIDI keyboard's gotta come with me. Even though guitar is my primary instrument, the MIDI keyboard is such an integral part to my songwriting and beat making process. Now I have two mini portable MIDI keyboards that I really like, the Akai MPK Mini, and of course the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II. The recent comparison I did of these two keyboards has a comment section flooded with indecision, and I'm not far off. I do like the Mini Lab just a little bit better, but when it comes to portability and throwing something in my backpack, the size and lightweight of the MPK Mini makes it the MIDI keyboard that I usually throw in my bag. The Audio-Technica M50Xs are my portable headphone of choice, and the Flyby Ultra has this nice Velcro strap here, which is perfect for neatly hanging your headphones. These headphones are a staple for most musicians and producers. I think they speak for themselves at this point, but they're foldable, they have a detachable cable, and they're super comfortable too. I'm finding out that these aren't my favorite headphones for mixing, but they're still a really great all-around headphone, always in the bag. Audio interface. Now, Apogee not only makes some of the best stuff on the market, but they also make some of the best portable audio interfaces. This is my Apogee Duet, which I've had for a number of years now. Super portable, super high quality, fits nicely in this little pouch in the main compartment of the Flyby Ultra. This is definitely a great portable option, but if I were in the market for an audio interface, specifically for portable and on-the-go use, I would definitely check out the Apogee One. It's super sleek, super tiny, has two inputs, and it also has this built-in condenser mic built right into the audio interface itself. It's kind of a nice all-in-one solution but I love my Apogee Duet. I've thrown so many different recording scenarios at this and I always recommend the Apogee One to people who are looking for a nice portable audio interface. Microphone, no surprise here. The Shure SM7B, one of the all time great mics. I think this mic definitely punches above its weight class. I've used this mic in so many different recording scenarios and it fits perfectly in this little pocket here in the Flyby Ultra. So this goes in the bag. Now, a pedal board is not something that comes with me every single time I leave the house, but it's nice to know that if I have a gig that only requires a few pedals, 
a demo or a recording session, something like that. Then this little pedal train nano fits perfectly in the Flyby Ultra. So a little pedal board like this is a must have if I'm doing any sort of guitar work. Now, last but not least on the music gear side of things, I have my Drum Brute Impact from Arturia. This is one of my favorite analog drum machines. It's got a built-in step sequencer. And this is a super fun piece of gear to have with you if you're collaborating or writing or just out making beats. And unlike most analog drum machines, it is just small enough to be perfectly portable and fit into the Stealth Alias backpack. Now, moving on to some video and content creator gear. First up, gotta talk about the drone. Man, what can I say about this little guy? I've had my Mavic Air 2 for a year now, and I absolutely love this thing. Way more than I ever anticipated. I definitely do try to splice in some drone footage here and there in the videos when it makes sense. But more than anything, I just love being a drone hobbyist. Being a new Angelino, I am constantly out exploring Los Angeles and Southern California, so I almost never leave home without the drone. You never know when there's gonna be an amazing shot to capture. Now, now, next up, this is no exaggeration. This is one of the best right around $100 purchases that I've ever made. This tiny little LED light is the Aperture MC. Perfect for lighting of any kind on the go, ideal for obviously video lighting. I actually even use this as a fill light a lot of times when I'm shooting video in the studio here. And it is just such a great and powerful little light. It has a number of different lighting modes, including CCT, which gives you temperature and brightness adjustable white light. HSI mode gives you full color control, plus saturation and intensity adjustments. It also has some fun built-in effects. It comes with this removable rubber diffuser, giving you some nice, professional looking soft light. As you can see, it's also battery powered and has a couple of magnets on the back for mounting purposes. It comes with this nice little carrying pouch, which you can throw in the bag or sometimes I clip it to the outside of the bag here. The Aperture MC, one of my favorite little pieces of gear and I almost never leave home without it. So if you're creating a lot of Instagram and TikTok content, chances are you're shooting a lot of mobile video. And if that's the case, you need to check out the DJI Osmo Mobile. Now, this is the OM3, but more recently, DJI have released the OM4, which has a few different features. But this is definitely one of the best mobile gimbals on the market, and it's just great for upping the quality of your mobile videos. More often than not, it comes in the bag with me. Last up, the Joby Gorillapod, of course made famous by the legend Casey Neistat. And I tend to use this less with my DSLR and more with things like the Aperture MC or my iPhone. Obviously Obviously it's a great mount anywhere solution for your light or your camera. More often than not, this thing comes in super handy on video shoots, so I almost always bring it with me. Now, last up in the random tech and other essentials portion of this what's in my bag, first up we have the iPad. Now the iPad is definitely a luxury as opposed to a necessity, but I still can't really leave home without it. I keep things like email, messages, notifications all off my iPad because I like to use this as a productivity device. And of course I watch my YouTube and my streaming services on the iPad. I use my iPad to write all of my notes for my YouTube videos, brainstorm video ideas, and I even use it when I'm writing music or practicing my instrument. And when I'm on the go, it also doubles as a second monitor, which is great for video editing and mixing music. Just all in all, a really essential piece to my workflow. Similarly, we have my mouse of choice, the MX Master 3. The MX Master workflow hype is real. I can't leave home without this mouse. Fun fact, my custom MX Master settings have over 150,000 views on YouTube. MX Master 3, don't leave home without it. Portable chargers, obviously a must when you're on the go. Lately, I have been using these new Anchor PowerCore Magnetic portable charger. And this isn't really a big deal if you don't have the iPhone 12, but if you do, the new MagSafe technology in the iPhone allows for magnetic charging, which is super dope. It's pretty sturdy too. I mean, you can get it off, but you, you gotta give it a good shaking. I bought a couple of these. They're pretty inexpensive, just nice to throw in the bag. And you can of course, obviously still use this to charge your other devices with a USB-C cable. Now, shout out to the legend Henny the Business for putting me onto these Hero Clips. They're pretty common, but I had never heard of them. But the Hero Clip is this little carabiner that has a little swivel hook. 
And honestly, I bought this just because I thought it was cool, but I use this so much more than I expected. Not only can you clip these onto the side of the Flyby Ultra, and if you've got another small bag or case, you can just kind of hang it from the bag like that, which is kind of cool. But you can use these hero clips in so many different ways. You can hang your bag up in a closet if you want. And I always just keep a hero clip right here on the side of the bag. Pocket knife, one of the key everyday essentials. However, it's not always appropriate to bust out your paramilitary too. It's kind of a big knife. Some people don't like that. So I keep this tiny little samurai style pocket knife in the bag. It's nice and small. It's Kind of fun because it's like a little samurai sword and it's perfect for all of your pocket knife needs. Shout out to Judd from Your Average Consumer for putting me onto this one, always in the bag. One random thing that my wife Olivia and I adopted in 2020 was playing cards together. It didn't involve sitting in front of the TV or being on our phones and we could just hang out and talk and play some cards. So I always carry a pack of cards with me. These are super nice playing cards from Theory 11. And of course they are Star Wars themed. What can I say? Not only am I a sucker for anything related to Star Wars, but also of well-made things. So Theory 11 cards for the win, and they always come in the bag with me. Last but not least, my Clever Fox Planner. For someone who is not really the most organized person in the world, this thing has completely changed my life. This thing helps me completely organize my life, keep track of tasks, goals, important habits and skills that I'm working on. Not the sexiest thing in the bag, but definitely one of the most important. And I've also got this bolt action pen that I found on Amazon, and it is a fidget dream. But all right, my friends, that is gonna wrap up today's video. Thanks so much for stopping by and letting me share with you what's inside my bag. Let me know in the comments if you got any ideas for your own everyday carry. All of this gear, of course, will be linked up in the description below for you. But listen, my friends, until next time, my name is Patrick. I'll catch you real soon, all right? Peace.